D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds, and welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this video, and you can read them for yourself and everything and figure stuff out, or you can just watch this video where I'm going to read it to you. Um, also, before I get started, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm and small channels like mine, we just keep getting shoved to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. All right, so now that we got that business out of the way, why don't we go ahead and get started? So for my first story this week, you guys, this comes from Deadline, my favorite. <clears throat> And so the Penguin Show uh, for HBO Max or Max, whatever they're going to call it. Max is a horrible name. They shouldn't call it Max. Uh, but they have added three new cast members uh, to the show. Um, now, uh, before I read this and, and everything, uh, I just want to tell you, well, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards because we should get into this because then you'll, you'll, you might skip it. So these are the three cast members. Um, if they don't all look familiar, they should. Um, I actually like all three of these people. So it says Michael Kelly, House of Cards, and Jack Ryan. Um, uh, Shohara uh, Ag Adishlu, I don't know how to say her name, The Expanse, and then House of Sand and Fog. I haven't seen a house of that, but uh, I did see The Expanse. She's fantastic in The Expanse. Anyways, and uh, Deidre, Deidre O'Connell, mm, Outrange, and Donna H. on Broadway. Um, I do like all three of these actors. I can't think of what Deidre's, Deidre, is that her name? It doesn't matter uh, what she's been in recently that I can remember, but uh, I just remember, I just know that I've seen her before and uh, I like her. Anyways, the other two are absolutely fantastic. Anyways, have been added to the HBO Max original series, The Penguin, uh, the working title uh, from Warner Brothers Television, DC Studios. They join previously cast Colin Farrell, who plays the title character, uh, Kristen uh, Malati. Uh, Melody, it mm, doesn't matter, uh, who plays female lead Sophia Falcone and uh, Renzi Feliz, who is believed to be playing the teen who the penguin be uh, befriends and makes his driver. So it says the eight episode drama continues the Batman crime saga Matt Reeves began with Warner Brothers Pictures, the Batman, and centers on the character played by Farrell in the film. Now, I just want to say right now, when in terms of the Batman, I did not like the Batman. I've seen it three times. I I I did a review for it, and you can check it out where I raved about it. But then I've watched it since then. And I just I'm just I literally I honestly 110 percent believe that Matt Reeves does not like Batman and he doesn't understand Batman. Um, if you go back and watch that movie, it's like Batman really like everybody wants to talk about all this detective work he does. And I'm like, what detective work? What are you talking about? Everybody did st everything for him. He didn't he like what he figure out a couple of riddles. So what? I'm like, uh, it doesn't matter. See, I saw people in their trailer reactions figure out the riddles. <clears throat> so then, um, and so for this, nobody's looking for this. Like, that's the thing. Like, when I don't know how you felt, but when you, while watching that, I didn't go, oh, I wonder what Penguin's story is. Like, I don't care. I don't care what Penguin's story is. Like, I really don't. Um, so we'll see how that works out. I don't know, but let's, uh, let's continue with this article because there's only uh, this paragraph left. So it says the series is exclusive produced by Reeves, uh, Dylan Clark, and who cares uh, who it's produced by and who's the writers. Um, uh, well, it's uh, Craig Zoe who directs the first three episodes and Bill Caro based on the characters created by DC by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. The Penguin is produced by Reeves and all these other people uh, da, 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 and says who they're repped for. Production is limited series will begins uh, this month in New York. Well, good for the good for you. OK, so here's the three the three actors. Now, who are they going to be playing? Um, I don't know, but something tells me uh, either like a lawyer types or uh, gangster types like uh I, Michael Kelly is just very sinister in general. I mean, if you look at him, like he's smiling there, kind of. He's kind of grinning more. But he is he he can be very menacing. If you watch House of Cards, he's very menacing in that. So I think that uh, he might just be like, you know, some kind of a, a goon or something. Who knows? Um, the uh, 
Deidre uh, O'Connell uh, woman. I just think she's going to be playing like uh, the Falcone mom or whatever. I don't remember her being in the comic book off the top of my head, but I think she's just going to play like the mom. And then um, the uh, Shohira Agadish Dash Lou. I don't know how to say her name. Sorry. Um, I think she's just going to be like maybe like an attorney or a doctor. You know, she's done that role plenty of times, a doctor. Uh, but we'll see who they're going to play. I mean, I'll watch this. I have HBO Max, although I think I'm going to have to drop it. It's getting expensive, you guys. Uh, but I just, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, yeah, I don't know who they're playing, but I don't really, I, in all honesty, I don't really care. But I will be watching the show and covering it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see how this turns out. You never know. So that is my first story of the week. So for my second story of the week, and this comes from comicbook.com. Uh, and this says, another Scooby-Doo movie with Hex Girls canceled by WB despite being deep into production. So it looks like another Scooby-Doo movie has been canceled. So let's read this, then I want to talk about it, because it talks about the Hex Girls, and I don't know how you guys feel about them, but I want to talk about it. Anyway, so it says, says Warner Brothers Discovery has reportedly canceled Scooby-Doo and the Haunted High Rise, a planned animated film with the appearance of three original songs by the Hex Girls. That's according to animator uh, Carolyn uh, Gare. Who says that uh, that says they had already recorded the movie's dialogue and the Hex Girls songs before the project was killed for a tax right now. There is apparently no animation, which was the next stage in production. So it's unlikely anything meaningful will leak out from the movie unless the Hex Girl songs get some kind of official release in the months to come. Now, I just want to say real quick before I get read the rest of this, I love the Hex Girls and the Scooby-Doo movies. I like, I like Scooby-Doo. Um, you know, so I would, if they could animate those and release those songs, that would be fantastic. I would, I would love that. I'm wondering why they keep, they keep canceling all these Scooby-Doo movies for tax write-offs. I mean, maybe it's because animation can get expensive depending on how you do it. It can get really expensive, but I, I just personally, like, I, I don't see what the hate is for Scooby-Doo, but we'll see. So it says, Gare, who recently worked on Trick or Treat, <clears throat> Scooby-Doo broke the news during the uh, conversation with the JB and Mill YouTube channel. She also shared links to some of her trick or treat work, and you can check out her social media profiles in the YouTube description uh, for the podcast in case she shares more from the haunted high rise down the road. Now, like maybe we'll get some concept art of the characters and stuff. You never know. I think the haunted high rise was even funnier than the first because we had the Hex Girls and new songs, and we pulled out all the stops, Gare told the podcast. We had motorcycle chases throughout the hallways. Joe called me and said, has the studio been in touch with you? And I said, no, I think it was the beginning of October. And he said, oh, well, somebody should be reaching out to you. I'm afraid it got shelved and it's a financial decision. And I think Warner Brothers is getting a tax credit for shelving it and canceling it. <clears throat> so it's dead, dead, dead. I think because of the meager, uh, the merger with Discovery, they just took a look at everything that was going to be going into streaming, everything that was going to be going into HBO Max, and just drew a red line through anything, figured out how much they spent do you know the saddest part is it would have cost the same to shelve it as it would to make it uh, because it was already lock, lock picture and in animation. That was another reason for them doing the two movies back to back because they had an animation studio they could be feeding work to. It seems so sad since it's already so close, but I do not. I do not understand the politics or how financial decisions at Warner Brothers get made. But I don't think they're going to... Uh, re uh resurrect this i don't know my producer keeps saying he doesn't think it's going to come back to life but maybe who knows it was locked it was locked picture that it was a locked picture i'm sorry but excuse me uh all dialogue songs were recorded 
it was ready for animation. And you can see the interview below. This is the interview it looks like. Um, yeah, we're not, I'm not going to watch that. I don't I don't care enough to watch that. But uh, what's going on here? Well, anyways, uh, so let's see. In the, the how much more of this do we have? I know I didn't. I don't remember this being this long. But okay, the interview happened more than two months ago. Uh, but outside of the niche Scooby Doo fan community, it was just started to find mainstream coverage in the last few days. That's how I found it. But. Because I'm not like I'm not like with somebody that like follows Scooby Doo. I'll just watch the movies and TV shows when they come out. Um, like the cancellations of Batgirl, Scoob, Holiday Haunt. I wanted to ski that Scoob Holiday Haunt. Um, the other titles in recent months, the axing of haunting haunted ri uh, high rise, was part of an overall attempt. Uh, at the Warner Brothers. Uh, gosh, sorry, I was getting distracted by that video. Overall attempt to buy Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff to cut about $3 billion from Warner Brothers debt right away, a strategy that is particularly important to Warner Brothers Discovery since the company is massively leveraged. In order to acquire the much larger Warner Brothers from AT&T, Discovery had to take on debt that amounts to significantly more than Discovery was worth at the time. The result was a merged company with $55 billion in debt and very little liquidity. Uh, liquidity. So little, so little that they reportedly cut back on theatrical releases in the fourth quarter of 2022 to save money on anything that wasn't considered a guarantee hit. The good news is that recently Warner Brothers Discovery CFO uh, Garner Windesfels claim that they were past the point of canceling project in the name of uh, restructuring and were getting back to the business of actually creating the content they have interest in. So it looks like I'm not going to read the rest of that, but uh, it looks like we got another Scooby Doo movie canceled, which I mean, I'm not 100% sad about it. Sorry, I had to pause that video. Um, but at the same time, I just go bummer, you know, because, uh, you know, this could have been really good. You never know. All right. So that is my second story of the week. So for my third and final story this week, you guys, they have cast the villain for Deadpool 3, and it is The Crown star, Emma Corrin. Now, I don't watch The the Crown. I just want to, she played Princess Diana in this latest season, and I believe in the last season, but don't quote me on that. I don't watch the show. It's not that I don't want to. It's just, you know, I got time. You know, I, I got stuff to do. But my wife does watch the show, and she personally likes it, so we'll see. Um, and I, from what I understand, she does a good job in terms of uh, playing Diana. Um, but let's read this because I have thoughts on who she could be playing, uh, but we'll see. All right. So it says the actor earned an Emmy nomination for their work um, as Princess Diana. And there's there's Deadpool, some Deadpool stuff. Oh, look, the video's coming over. I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, so it says. So it says Deadpool 3 is casting up. Uh, is mm, I don't know about that, that comment, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, Emma Corrin is joining Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman in the feature. Reynolds announced Tuesday on Twitter, new addition to the family, the Deadpool family for clarity, Reynolds wrote, which is just like a real family, except with less uh, swearing. Welcome, Emma Corrin. Character details are not revealed, but it is believed to be the villain. Dun, dun, dun. Corin is known for The Crown uh, with their work as Princess Diana earning an Emmy nomination. They have also delved into the comic book space before with work on the Batman TV prequel Pennyworth and appeared in a Harry Styles feature, My Policeman. Uh, the first, I, I, I only watched the first season of Pennyworth and I don't remember her in that show, but it doesn't even matter because that show, but personally for me was not interesting. Okay, so it says the first two Deadpool, uh, Deadpool films were made at 20th Century Fox and brought the character and Ryan Reynolds to new levels of popularity. The property moved over to Disney following the company's uh, acquisition of Fox and the new installment will be the first R-rated film in the MC in this Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, is it part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, though? Let's be honest about that. Disney has set a release date of November 8th, 2024 for the feature. The new film is lurking, uh, luring Jackman out of retirement as Wolverine. 
Uh, you know, uh, you know, he says he retired, but he's coming back for this. And I have a feeling that if they ever wanted to do another movie with him as Wolverine, I have a feeling that he would come back. They just just uh, give him some money and he'll come back. I know he would. Um, actors can't stay away, especially if they become, you know, irrelevant and stuff. OK, so it says the actor who previously stated that 2017's Logan would be his final time wearing the claw surprised with an announcement in late September that he was returning. Uh, Sean Levy is helming uh, after directing Reynolds in Free Guy and The Adam Project. He also directed the Jackman feature Real Steel. Uh, and ha that's the robot movie, right? And had spoken about wanting to bring the two men together in a project at some point. While he was not speaking about Deadpool 3, Levy did tell The Hollywood Reporter in an interview timed to The Adam Project that he wanted to direct the actors in a big, fat, bromance sandwich of a movie because the world wants the Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds movie. Sure we do. I'm all about it. <clears throat> Corin is repped by who cares. And this is the this is the uh the tweet that he put out. Was this the end of the article? Oh, I thought it was longer than this. Sorry, guys. So who could uh Cor Emma Corrin be playing? All right, so this is my thoughts. Let's go back to this tweet. Oh no, we'll just go back up here. This is my thoughts. Okay, so I was thinking one, she could be playing um uh Zorn, uh, which not Zorn. Oh, what is her name? Yeah, Zorn. Zorn, the female version of Zorn. Um, and if you've if you uh, read the comic books, uh, Zorn is like this. It's a dude. It's a dude. But there is a female version in the um, the uh, the Age of Apocalypse where it's actually um, Husk. So. Uh, but I was like, I was like, oh, maybe she could be playing Husk. I mean, Husk is not really like a a villain. She does, she is in, um, she's like a Batman. I'm uh, not Batman. Sorry, <laughs> she's not a villain. But she in Age of Apocalypse, she is a villain. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by this this video right here, and I'm trying not to. Let's go back down to the tweet so I don't get so I don't get distracted. Okay. So in Age of Apocalypse, Zorn. So in the real comic book, Zorn is um a is is a fake out because it's really um Magneto uh disguised. And he, I believe I if I remember correctly, it's been so long since I've read these comic books. He's he's lost his memory, but he wears this helmet. And um, yeah, it was it was Magneto, right? Oh gosh, I, it's been so long. Anyways. And then in the Age of Apocalypse, Zorn was a female, and it was really Husk disguised as Zorn, because, you know, Husk can tear away her skin, and she can turn into other things when she tears her skin away. So she is, um, so she's really, uh, so Zorn is really just like a, 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 she's a villain in that Age of Apocalypse uh, in the new version of it, because she was betrayed, she felt. Um, which she kind of was, but uh, but long story short, that's something that I think she could be. Sorry, I went on a long tangent there over nothing. I'm trying to remember the comic books. I, I'd have to get them back out and read them. But anyways, also, I heard some people saying that she was Danger Room. And Danger Room is like the embodiment of the Danger Room. So it just comes up with all these different like stuff and everything. Um, those are just some options. I mean, in all honesty, she could not be... be um, you know, uh, be playing either one of these, obviously, but we'll see how it turns out. Sorry about my tangent, but I am curious to see who she's going to play. She's got a great look here with her blonde hair, blue eyes and everything. Um, but I am interested in seeing where this movie goes. Cause I did enjoy both the first, um, uh, two movies. I thought they were very good. Um, and so I'm interested in seeing where they go with this. All right, you guys. So those are my three stories this week. Tell me, what do you guys think about all of this? How do you feel <clears throat> about them adding these three new cast members to uh, the Penguin? Do you like this idea? Do you like these actors? You know, what's something that you really like them in? I, I love this uh, uh, 
uh, Shohara, I don't know how to say her name, but she was in uh, The Expanse, and that's a great show. Um, but how do you feel about this show? Is this something you're looking forward to? I mean, I... I I, I mean, I, I, if you're, if you really love the Batman, I know people that love the Batman and they are like, oh, there's going to be a penguin show. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, that's cool and everything. But I really, I don't want to dive into this world. I mean, I will cause I, I need content, but I have no interest in this show whatsoever. Um, so, but we'll see, we'll see. It could be really, really good. It could be really, really good. You never know. Um, guys, how do you feel about them canceling this this uh, this Disney um, haunted high rise or Scooby Doo haunted high rise movie over at uh, Warner Brothers? They're canceling another Scooby Doo movie, but this one had the Hex Girls in it. Um, and are you like me? Would you like it if they release those songs so that way we could at least hear what they what the the Hex Girls nude songs were and everything? Because I would like to see them, and I would like them to also animate it, animate those songs. I'm pretty sure three three five minute videos can't be that expensive but you never know i don't know enough about it to to really like be all like uh yeah an authority on it and then finally how do you guys feel about emma corn joining the cast of deadpool 3 as the villain is this something that you like do you not like it do you like emma corn do you like her on the crown you know have you seen her in other things i haven't seen if i've seen her in something i don't remember her um, but, and then how do what do you, who do you think she's going to play as the villain? Like who would be a good villain for Deadpool and, and, uh, and Hugh Jackman's Wolverine to fight. And apparently they're going to like hop through time or whatever. That's probably, that's probably how they're going to get to the MCU. You know what I'm saying? But tell me, how do you guys feel about all of this? Uh, go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go and hit that like button. You know, I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week on my Week in Review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey, nerds. If you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.